Welcome back to another video on this channel. Um, in today's tutorial, I try to create a chord progression tool or preset inside Bitwig Studio. And I try to be as clear and simple as possible. And I try to explain it step by step. Maybe try and recreate it alongside with me while you're watching. Um, but you can also download the preset, of course, then afterwards in the description. Um, but there's a lot of stuff actually in this video, uh, a lot of stuff to learn. Um, I try to explain how you create these chords, how you can change the relationship between each of these notes, how you can bring in rhythmic elements to the uh, chord progressions, how you can uh, apply some swing and groove, how you get these notes um, out of the grid into different instruments, maybe VFC instruments, Bitwig instruments or external hardware, how you get these notes to different tracks, how you can bounce it down to MIDI clips, uh, tweak it even further. So there's a lot of things in there and a lot of things to learn about Bitwig and the grid itself. As I said, I try to be as simple as possible, so don't shy away of watching this video. Um, maybe there's uh, some kind of switch um, where you get some things um, you haven't understand before. So um, yeah, let's start. But before we start, I show you here on an instrument track in a note clip what we are gonna trying to do so you can see it in a kind of familiar environment. So you, we, you all know how to build chords, right? We have a root key here, maybe it's C3 or C2. Then we have a third, one, two, three, four, or maybe a minor third. One, two, three, four is the fifth. And maybe we also build a seventh. One, two, three here. And we have to set, we have basically here a root pitch, which is which is zero. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10. These are basically the semitones we need. And maybe we also create a bass note here, which is one octave lower than uh, the root key. So we all try to do this and create this inside the grid. Also, everything is tweakable with some macro knobs, which means you can modulate this or automate um, to make changes over time. And um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. You probably learn a lot how the grid works and how you can uh, inter and how the grid can interact with the um, VST instruments and also with the synthesizers and so on. So okay, let's remove this. Go on this instrument track here and we create a new polygrid device. That's that. We can switch into the bully crit here by clicking on it and we can delete everything. We don't need it. So the first module we need is a value, value knob, which just defines some values and we can use here an oscillate oscilloscope. You can see at the zero position, we are exactly in the middle, which is zero. We turn this up, we can go to 100%. 100% is the value of one. You can also use your readout. You don't trust me. Um, it's one, zero. And when we select this value knob here and switch to bipolar in the left inspector panel, we get now also the negative range, minus one, plus one, zero. And we call this slider here pitch because that's the value that changes our pitch for our chords. Okay, let's remove this here. And the problem with the pitch now is when we use your sine oscillator and also an output here. And when when we use here the pitch for the for the input, we get now pretty high pitches and also pretty low pitches and it's also not stepped. It's not quantized to a scale. Uh, we get in between pitches or uh, in between note pitches. So we have to fix that. But you can also see uh, you can change the pitch of an oscillator by using here the input check 
feeding in some kind of signal and disabling here the pre -cord. And The pre -cord is basically just, you know, the sine oscillator receiving input from the keyboard or from the note uh, piano from the, from the piano roll. We don't want that. We only want to interact uh, with the sine oscillator here with the cables. So, so I disabled here basically this pre -cord. Okay, so we can roof, remove here. Oh no, we actually let this in. Um, so the range or the note range or the pitch range is pretty high. So we have to scale this down. And there is a note scaler in Bitwig. Looks like this here, or pitch scaler. But I don't use it. I think it's way too big. Um, so I'm using an attenuate here which does basically kind of the same thing. So when you use your two oscilloscopes and we feed this into the attenuate and then go into the second uh, thing here, you can see it's the same signal. But when we scale this down to maybe 50%, you can see the range is different. At 100%, we are only at 50% here in the positive range and also 50% in the negative range which equals to a value of zero, minus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5. So we can use it attenuate to scale the signal. And that's exactly what we want. We want to, um, yeah, we don't want to exceed a certain pitch range. So when we use this here as an input, can define our highest and lowest pitch uh, with this attenuate. So we can call this here scalar. Maybe also remove here the oscilloscope. It's just to show you what's going on. So the next thing is we need to narrow the um, signal down to a scale, to a note scale. And I'm using a quantizer for this here. And when we use here some of the keys and turn the knob, you can see it's now stepped. So it's a stepped signal. Maybe switch it oscilloscope to this mode or to this mode. You can see now it's it's a, it's, a, it's a stepped signal. It's not that fluid anymore like before, yeah, where it's all over the place. So we quantize the signal and narrow everything down to a scale. So that's what we want. Um, but for our example, I'm using the scale of D sharp minor, which is all the black keys. And the benefit of this is the D sharp minor scale is when you use only the black keys, it's pentatonic. It's basically the main, the important keys of the minor, of the, of the minor scale. Um, that are pretty useful for melodies. And there are only five keys, one, two, three, four, five, instead of seven. Um, I think when you add these two notes here, you get the full D sharp minor scale. But we stick with the pentatonic scale for now. And the problem now is the root note of D sharp minor is D sharp, which is this one here. But we are at Z, C sharp. And when we enable your C, we are going back to, or the quantizer goes back here to the C, C note. So that that's because um, our signal is at zero, at the value of zero here. And the value of zero is in the signal or in the pitch signal range, always in Bitwig at least, C3. Um, so we have to offset the signal by three semitones with the transposer here. Of course, we want to go from C to D sharp, right? This is just an offset. Go to the root node of our key, of our scale, when the pitch signal is at zero. So every, down, every time you go back to zero here with the, with, the, with the slider or with the knob, then you are at the root node of our scale, which is D-sharp. Okay, so this is the offset. Um, okay, what else? So now this should be 
That's, it should sound pretty nice, or at least useful. So we have now a pitch knob here, which we also can bring into the device front panel here by using a macro knob, switching this to bipolar mode, modulating this here by one, and call this also pitch. We can change the pitch from outside the grid, so we don't need to actually go into the track, into the grid patch, and then change it here. We can change it from the outside, so it's just a quality of life thing, basically. So now that we have a pitch that we can change, we have a scaler that scales down our pitch range of maybe two octaves. We have an offset here that brings up the root key uh, to our D sharp minor key here, which is the root of our scale. And we can change the pitch and change also um, yeah, the outcome of the sine oscillator. So, um, so I bring this over here because we now we now create some multiple voices. So this is our root here, and then of course we are creating um, the, the second voice, which is our uh, third here, and maybe we create also the seventh, um, the, the the fifth. And also the base. So the base is special because it's just one octave lower, and we can do this by using an octaver here in front and just say just pitch this down one or two octaves. So this is pretty easy. Um, this is our root key, so nothing changes. This is our third. So we can use here a transpose and bring this up three semitones or four, it doesn't matter really. Um, and we use the transpose here also for the fifth and bring this up uh, seven semitones. And maybe we can also create here um, the seventh, which is. 10 semitones up. Um, so that's that. This should be already creating a nice chord. Maybe not the right chord, but it's creating a chord. So we're using a mixer here, feeding everything together. Bam. Maybe use an volume. And up here at the end, so we can change the volume. So it's already a chord, and we can change the, the chord by using the pitch here. And because all of these voices are quantized here with the pitch quantizer, they are all within the scale, so it's you get diatonic chords pretty easily. So to make this more interesting, um, we have to make changes to some of these voices. And there are multiple options that are interesting, of course. Um, for instance, we can say, well, the base, the baseline maybe should not move that that much, and also. I don't want to have maybe not all the keys of the scale uh, for the base, so we can narrow the base down here to these three important keys. Maybe, maybe bring in this one here. I don't know. It's it's completely up to you what sounds good to you. Um, maybe we stick here for the root key to our. Um, um maybe you go here with the full D sharp minor scale. Then the third here, maybe it's okay to stick to pentatonic or maybe this one key. And the fifth, um, it's important probably for the melody. So melody is nice to have only the, dia the pentatonic um, notes in there. So this could be already sounding nice. So every voice now has different quantize options, which means it's depending on what input you do, there are 
quantizing differently and switching to different nodes because some of these nodes have more options and uh, or more quantize um uh, more quantize options here so it, it's shifting differently and it's behaving in an non-controllable way but it's still everything is diatonic uh, maybe listen to this so now it's uh, now we can maybe also introduce some um, chromatic notes um, you can maybe do this by just yeah allowing all keys and then just turning off these keys you think are not fitting can leave this completely uh, chromatic maybe this one I think there's even fridge in here if you switch from this to this I'm not wrong But you can also just leave it diatonic. Um, so yeah, you can play around with this and can bring in some out of scale chords and maybe experiment with this. Uh, make the changes ch uh, chances higher that the chords are not that boring. Um, okay, so that's that. You can also introduce your more attenuates and change the note scale of some of these voices even more. Um, Let's say you have the bass sound here and you want to have even slower movement or not that many um, octaves of range of bass notes. You can do this here by attenuate with 50%. Maybe you can also use an, which is pretty unusual, using a volume knob here, which just amplifies the signal. It's not, not something you can use only for audio signals. You can also use this up here. Um, let's change this here. Um, so what this does is maybe use an oscilloscope here um, or two. Go with the signal in here and then out of the volume in here. Amplify the signal. You can see when I change here the pitch, this one changes faster than this one just by adding your volume knob to offsetting basically the yeah the how the signal changes over time so you can bring in with the volume knob here some differences to some of the voices and this can be interesting because here the seventh no uh, seventh uh voice or note um should be maybe move more in uh, a different note range than all the other notes. It's going to be maybe interesting. That's already pretty nice. Um, so now the next problem is that um, there is no really quantization to the rhythm. Um, when a pitch changes is more decided by the quantizer itself than the 
than the rhythm of the track. So we can uh, change this or fix this by using sample and holds. Um, it's a device looks like this here. And this, this device takes basically a signal, in our case here the pitch, and holds the pitch until it gets a pulse or signal on this input here. And for this, we just use a trigger. And the trigger module sends out the pulse every four nodes, as you can see here. And we use this on here. So this one now changes the pitch or holds the pitch um, only until we get the new trigger from this trigger module. So what this does is quantizes basically our pitch change to the rhythm, to our transport um, speed. Maybe go to 85 BPM here. And you sample and hold your on all of these oscillators. Bam. Now we need to trigger here for all of these sample and holds. Okay. So when we change now the pitch, I also activate here the metronome so you can hear the, the rhythm. Let me change now the pitch. Doesn't matter how fast you change the pitch, it's always synchronizing to the, to the four notes. You can also go up to eight. So this is a bit boring because everything changes at the same time. So we have to make different triggers for different, yeah, for different voices. Um, so you maybe clone this here and use a different trigger for each of these sample and holds. This is something you can do. But what I like to do is just use one trigger and call this one clock. Go up to 16 notes, which is probably hi-hat speed, so 16th notes. Um, and then use a clock quantizer, this device here. And the clock quantizer takes um, two inputs here, the clock itself, which is this one here, and maybe just remove this and listen to this one. Call it clock, just to remove all the cables. So this is the clock here and changes here to trigger mode instead of gates. And then we can input your second signal, this one, eight, eight, eight triggers. And when we go here to uneven numbers, let's say 11, so it tries to synchronize 11 pulses with 16 pulses, which, which is something that's not really fitting, but we get interesting rhythms out of this. In, all of these rhythms are synced to a 16th note grid and it sounds pretty nice actually. And yeah, we do this here for each step. So let's do this. Um, copy this here, copy this here, here, and here. So now we use this for that, this for that. Just connecting everything. So now we can dial in here different speeds for different voices. So the bass should be maybe playing a bit slower. So maybe go for three here. This is the root key, maybe two, five, uh, six, seven. So just some uneven numbers can be interesting. Okay. So now that we have this here, we have a quantizer, different triggers, and the clock. Get maybe.
already a nice, interesting sounding um, chord progression. Um, we also can use your macro maybe for the scaler and change the scale from the outside just a tad here and use it or call it note range because that's what it does. It changes how far the notes go up and down. So maybe pull this down, go all the way up. Maybe let's play it. So we can bring in here with the note range and maybe an LFO, classic LFO. And this LFO is pretty slow, two bars and modulating at the note range just a tad which changes the note range and it gets already a nice sounding effect it doesn't change the chord it just changes yeah it changes the chord a bit but the root note is always the same To get interesting movements in there just with the LFO and changing the, the, the note range. Okay, so what we don't have is the notes are playing all the time, so we have a continuously. Um, tone happening it's almost like a drone so what we can do about this is introducing some gates or adsrs these ones here and these adsrs are triggered also from the keyboard or from the from the piano roll uh, but we don't want that or we don't want to do that we want to use the input checks here so just disable this and hook these up here to the Oscillators, also here, disable, 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 dis disable, okay. So we can now use the same quantized uh, trigger signals here we are using for the sample and holds, also for the ADs. This should be sound already pretty interesting. Just connect these two. Oh, it's already. And this sounds like this. Um, let's hit play here. Let's add the reverb. Maybe the bass sound here. I think it sounds already pretty nice. Um, delay two. So you can also always go back to the root node by just double clicking. It's so fun to play around with this. 
And when you are not happy with the with the result, with how this chord sounds, um, just remember you can step in, bring in here some chromatic um, notes for certain voices. You can change the relationship of the of the pitch to every other voice by using yeah, these scalars or these attenuates, scaling the signal differently for each voice and yeah, getting different chords out of this. Um, so it's all like um, a thing of tweaking and finding the right settings, the right, um, the right numbers for each of these voices. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically it. What I wanted to show you, but I want to continue and show you how you get these pitch signals and gate signals out of the grid and use it for uh, maybe VST instruments and Bitwig synthesizers. Okay. So for this, um, maybe I saved this here actually. And call it chord rocker. Let's call it this and say note generates chords in D sharp minor. And I probably want to share this under the video so you can just download this. Maybe, maybe I publish it a bit later. So you are forced to try it out for yourself to build it for yourself and learn actually something <laughs> instead of me just you know putting download up and you download it and play around it for five minutes and then we will see <laughs> okay so to output these uh, things here as notes we don't need all the oscillators because they are generating the sound and we don't need to use the envelopes here we don't need the mixer we don't need the output volume no output nothing we only need pitches and the gate signals okay so to output that we need what is called modulator here and this one is the pitch well, maybe i just clone this here multiple times first So this is the first one is the pitch and we have the gate signal here. Yeah. But um but um but um but um okay and to output these signals we need some kind of a hack. Oh we also don't need you to reverb anymore. Inside the FX box here of the of the polygrid we insert the preset which is called grid note out and this is this is a preset by myself and it's also available for free the link is down in the description you can just download this preset drag it into bitwig and then save it as a preset and yeah have it there um, for every time you need it um so this grid note out generates a note and you can modulate from inside the grid with these modulators, all these macro knobs here or remote controls. And by modulating the pitch and the gate, it generates a note at the end here of the grid note out. Um, but we need multiple notes because we have a, we have chord, right? A chord needs multiple notes. So what we need before the script note out is an fx layer uh note fx layer this one here just put this in there so we have one layer with one grid note out and then we can just select this layer and hit ctrl and d uh, to duplicate this multiple times and just rename this here with ctrl and r um this is probably the seventh Oh, seventh. This is the fifth. The third. This is the root, and this is the base. And we rename this node of X layer here to chord generator, just to 
yes, just to find it better afterwards in the select in the drop down menus. Um, so now that we have this, we need to connect is each of these remote controls here. So the seventh is a gate is this one. The pitch is this one. Just modulate it here all the way. Just click and drag all the way. It's actually modulated by two. Um, this is the fifth um, pitch. This is the gate. This is the pitch, this is the gate, root node, this is the pitch, this is the gate, pitch, and gate. So now you can see we're already generating nodes here. So now that we have this, we can actually put in a polysynth after this, um, yeah, after this device here, inside FX box, still. We're still not done yet. It's just demonstrating what we've done so far. So now we can trigger here the pitches and the gates from within the grid, this polysynth. Okay, but that's not really what we want so far. We want to have a real nice, um, yeah, separated node generator. So what we what we do now is we put this into a chain device. Call it chain device here. And a chain device is just a dummy container where you could put in some devices of Bitwig and just group it together basically. But the the good thing about this chain device is that it leaks nodes out. The FX a uh, box here doesn't leak nodes out. Basically, all these nodes that are outputting into this FX box are not coming out after this polygrid. So if you put a a poly synth here after the polygrid, you see you don't hear anything. You have to put it into the FX box after the chord generator. Okay, so that's the important part. That's why we're doing this. Um, so what we do now is we put the polygrid into the chain device. And after the polygrid device, we are using a node receiver. It's getting, it's, it's getting tricky. <laughs> node receiver. And with this node receiver, we can pull out the nodes from within the FX box. We do this by going polysyn, polychain, chain, uh -huh, FX, and chord generator. And I can hear it works. So FX box doesn't leak out nodes. So we're using a node receiver, pulling out the nodes from the FX box, putting out the nodes after the node receiver, and the chain device leaks the nodes out of the chain container to the polysynth after the chain container. So what this does now is that we can save this as a preset. And we know this generates nodes and put some random synth after after the chain device. We can even use here, um, I don't know, a random uh, random VST instrument. Um, let's see if I have something here. Instrument. Uh, FM8, yeah. So right, it's just a VST instrument getting the notes from the note receiver and the note receiver getting the notes from the fx box and the note god generator has different layers on each layer there's a note grid node out receiving signals from each of these modulators here you know it's quite hacky but it works um I really hope we get a grid node output in some of the next updates. Um, I think a lot of people are waiting for this for two years and I created this grid node output I think one or two years ago and it's still heavily used by the community. <laughs> and I use it also a lot of times. It's pretty handy actually. So it, it works. Um, so now that we have this um, we can put all these things here 
in front of the chain device. Maybe we call it port rocker again. And at the preset page, and we change the pitch, we change the note range. And maybe we also change here the amount of this one. LFO amount. The LFO amount changes the node range, right? So when we pull this down, no modulation is applied to the node range. Pull this up. It's modulating here heavily. <laughs> so, and then we can save this here to port rocker the second. And it's a neat little device you can use now and pull it into your projects that are generating chords. And you just like like I showed you here, use some some device if you like. It's actually some kind of piano sound in here. It's actually not what working right. Digital electric gear, other piano keys. Oh, it's really quiet. Yeah, it's pretty quiet. And you can generate nice sounding uh, chords on the fly. And if you're not happy uh, with the chords, then you can always step in, change some settings here inside the, the polygrid device, you know, to have like different behaviors for different songs, different projects, or for some live acts. I don't know. Okay, that's that. Maybe, maybe you don't want to have all notes playing just on one instrument. Maybe you want to have a se separate, um, yeah, a separate channel for maybe the bass. Um, and maybe um, this one is here playing only. Uh, the third, something like this. You can use here always the note receiver and just grab the signal from the chord rocker, go into the chains here, polygrid chains, and instead of grabbing the signal from the chord generator, you can go into the chord generator and can grab here maybe the third from the grid note out. And also grab the bass here. Maybe pull chord rocker, chord chains. Oh no. No, I misclicked. FX bass. So I have this here now as a bass. Rocker. Yeah, it's a bit setting this up is a bit hard, but you know, it works. Fifth, yeah, why not? And maybe we can also use your maybe a um, piano for. Uh, for the um, for the seventh, I don't know. Yeah, let's use your piano. This one. Uh, 
Yeah, let's grab here. Court Rocker. Chains. FX. Seventh. That's actually pretty quiet. Maybe we need to implement here velocity to amp up everything. Yeah, that's also something I can tell you. Um, you can also change the velocity, of course, and some CCs if you want. So when you change the pitch, everything changes. So something we can do is maybe also introduce here some rhythmic changes. So we have here these different triggers, right? Um, maybe you can add here some macros to it, but we just for the sake of this tutorial, I make it a bit quicker. Um, maybe I just pull the remotes on on the um, chain um, device here. So we just change the steps on some of these. Um, let's listen. Yeah, as you can see, it's uh, you can add a lot of uh, different changes here just by adding modulators. And so, um, of course, you can modulate this if you want to. You can add here an LFO um, to that and say uh, change the steps over time, right? Make it pretty slow. So the rhythm changes then all the time, but in a in a behavior you can uh, predict so that's also possible so it's, it's like all everything you do it's basically to make it a bit more complex but still predictable and um, keep it in a flow and keep it interesting and so on so um what we also can do is introduce swing for instance um um you can hear it this is pretty pretty straight right Ding, 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 ding. It's, it's pretty straight. Because these clock timers here getting a phase signal from the device itself, which is the polygrid. And you can see when you click here the device itself, you can see this here on the left side, device phase. You can change how long a phase is. In this case here, it's just one bar. But you can also apply shuffle here if you click this. Um, then all these phase signals will be uh, modulated. And when you go into the play uh, knob here and enable the global groove, you can dial in shuffle. And this global shuffle then is applied to the device, to the polygrid, and the polygrid then applies it to this clock signal. So you get, yeah, shuffle basically. So this sounds like this. So this is pretty straight then when you have this at zero. Just turn this up so you can hear it better. When you dial in the shuffle. You can get in more groove. It's also something you can do. If you don't want to use the, the global the global groove and just want to apply some groove to some of these notes here, you can always go for um, switching to pre-chord off here or this one here, pre-chord off. Or maybe it's even better just to switch just this off here. Switch the pre-chord off 
and get the face in. So this is basically the same as before instead of this enabled and nothing input and this disabled and this as an input, it's the same. And then you can bring in, I think you have to use the shift device here and then modulate this with an LFO. It's, just, it's the same thing. Let, let me try it out here. Um, sign. Um, let's play it back and listen to it. So it gets groove in there with just offsetting or modulating here the base signal a bit. Okay, so just as an yeah, just as a tip if you want to create more rhythmically interesting things. Um, another thing is when you are in the grid here, we are generating only the gate signal and the pitch signal, which is okay, but you can also introduce here in my grid node out, we have also velocity. And this is the mod wheel, CCs, some CCs you can change. So if you want, you can also create some interesting signal lines for velocity. Uh, for instance, you can just use a step mod here and uh, maybe add interpolation right and then modulate your velocity yeah this is the piano basically let's let's see you can see here the velocity now changes over time and this is because of this so you can just use the step mod here or maybe also make an interesting um, algorithmic approach to how you want to create these velocity settings. There are kinds of ways you can also use an LFO here or maybe mix in multiple LFOs, um, you know, a lot of ways possible. Just to give you this tip what you can increase uh, what you can change to to make it better or to make it more interesting so you can influence the pitch you can influence the ratios between the different notes you can influence the groove um, the loudness the rhythm so everything it's it's all there and you can drag out every setting in front in, into the front panel of these devices here make it easy accessible with these remote controls maybe use your midi keyboard and all your eight controllers on it and then perform it or find sweet spots um, how you can perform it easily um, for yourself and then in the end you just record it um, oh yeah that's maybe also something i can show you how you can record it actually so how do you record it? Um, it's basically instead of using here the note receiver going into the polysynth, you just use it as a MIDI input, uh, not your MIDI keyboards, but you can go here down to tracks, right? You can go to chord rocker and um, then go to FX uh, chord generator, right? And then just record it here get all these notes when i turn it this knob around and yeah get different chords out of it so this is yeah also something you can do and then maybe you can make a dedicated project just for this and use it for generating interesting chords so you can use this and tweak it around find sweet spots i think it's it's a great way of uh creating rhythmic interesting chord progressions um at least it's it's a start and if you want to 
generate generative uh, music, then this is also something um, you need maybe to learn and uh, implement it in your projects.